in matters of salvation, faith, and life. Proclaiming and contending for the Christian faith. Understanding the Bible in its simplest sense. Truth through the lens of the Holy Scriptures. I'm Randy Marshadash. And I'm Tim Duhay Longsad. And you're watching Truth in Focus. Good day and welcome to another episode of Truth and Focus. This is Randy Marshadash. And this is Tim Duhay Longsod. Now today we'll be discussing a subject about marriage. Brad, uh, marriage ang ating uh, subject ngayong araw na ito. Uh, among the topics that we have discussed so far on this podcast, I think this is the, the topic that is the lightest. Hmm. But when I say that it is the lightest, it doesn't mean that it is not a topic that is worth uh, studying and understanding. Mm. Dahil uh, pag uh, nagkamali tayo rito ng pagintindi kung ano itong topic na ito, eh, malamang ang daming mga repercussions nito, mm. Randy. So, having said that, I would say that uh, still, though the lightness of this topic as compared to the previous podcast is mm. uh, apparent, Mm. Nonetheless, it is very essential and important. Yes. Uh, uh, sabi natin lightest is because uh, it, it has uh, four short paragraphs in the confessions. And uh, even the treatment nga ni Samuel Waldron dun sa kanyang modern exposition is medyo hindi ganun kahaba. Pero, in real time, this is not light because marriage in real time, it takes a lifetime dealing with it every day. Uh, this is a social issue. And uh, oh. with lots of implications if we have it wrong in mm. our uh, understanding. Yes. Yeah, so, so, siguro, uh, before tayo mag-start, uh, again, inaanyayahan natin yung ating mga viewers uh, na nagka-follow sa ating podcast dito po sa Truth and Focus. Uh, makikita nyo po ito sa YouTube, sa Modern Reformation TV. You could also follow us on Facebook sa Modern Reformation and through the Facebook page ng uh, ating uh, Church, no? Uh, sa Herald Grace Bible Fellowship of Davao. So, pwede po kayo maka-comment po doon kung mayroon po kayo mga questions and uh, we'll be very cordial to uh, respond to your inquiries or questions. And as abot po ng aming mga kaya, ipipilitin po namin sagutin po. Sa abot lang po ng aming mga kaya, ha? Hindi po yung sa hindi na namin kaya. Okay. So, uh, pwede po kayong mag- uh, i-like nyo po yung ating uh, page, uh, i-follow nyo po. Uh, and uh, subscribe po sa YouTube and uh, also uh, hit the notification button doon sa, fa- sa uh, ating YouTube channel para lagi po kayong updated sa mga videos na ating uh, ina-upload every week. And also, we're, uh, we have worship online sa Herald of Grace Bible Fellowship yeah. of Davao. So if you're here in downtown Davao City, uh, visit us here in uh, Herald Grace Bible Fellowship of Davao. Or if they're somewhere else and the net is the only way that mm. they could uh, see us or listen to us, then follow the net. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, uh, follow us online. Yeah. Okay, so, siguro, hindi na natin patagalin ito, no? Sige, Randy. Uh, I think yung nakatoka na two paragraphs eh, nasa iyo, mm. uh, please uh, start the ball rolling. Okay. So, uh, sa magtataka po, baka ano pinag-uusapan nila ito? Bible pa ba yan? Yes, nasa Bible po ating pinag-uusapan. Bali, summary of the Bible, which is, you will find it here. Ito po, 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith. Uh, ito po ay, um, bali, compilation ng mga confessions noong 1689. Uh, why we subscribe to it is because for us, we see that this, it is the most balanced among all the confessions. At uh, bukod pa doon, madali pong unawain. At the same time, uh, biblical po siya. Hindi po siya katulad nung iba na mga uh, creeds confessions na 
gawa-gawa lang na kung sino-sino nag-usap lang sa kanto no? at nagtayo na ng kanilang relihiyon kinabukasan. Uh, hindi po yun katulad nito. So, if you could Google it, browse it in history, you will find out uh, paano nag-umpisa ito, 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith. And uh, para po dun sa mga gustong makakuha ng kopya, uh, free po ito sa internet. Pwede niyo pong i-download po. Okay, so we'll be discussing today uh, sa 1689 uh, London Baptist Confession of Faith is nandoon sa chapter 25 in which it talks about uh, the subject of, of marriage. And I'll be reading the first paragraph. Sabi rito, marriage is to be between one man and one woman. Neither it is lawful for any man to have more than one wife nor for any woman to have more than one husband at the same time. I'll be proceeding to the next paragraph, paragraph 2. Marriage was ordained for the mutual help of husband and wife, for the increase of mankind with a legitimate issue, and for preventing of uncleanness. Okay. So, sa first paragraph, sabi nga dito na, marriage is to be between one man and woman, uh, pinapakita dito yung uh, tema of the monogamous rule of marriage. So, ang marriage is monogamous. That was its original design. Yes. Uh, from creation, it is monogamous. If uh, you have your Bibles with you, uh, kindly open it with me on uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Verse 24, ang sabi dito ng Panginoon, For this reason, I'm, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So, ang pinag-uusapan dito ay ang lalaki at babae at sila ay magiging isa. Uh, this is marriage. At uh, mer- biblical ba ang marriage? Nasa Biblia ba ito? Sa Old Testament pa lamang, sa umpisang libro, which is Genesis, pinakita dito ang marriage. Si Adam and Eve, silang unang ikinasal, ang nagkasal sa kanila mismo, ang Diyos sa Garden of Eden. And uh, sa New Testament, may kita natin ang miracle na ginawa ng ating Panginoon, uh, parang Yeso Kristo, nung when He turned the water into wine, doon sa wedding, wedding in Cana. Cana. Yes. So, makita natin na... Uh, ang Biblia ay nangungusap patungkol sa marriage o kasal o sa pagsasama ng isang lalaki at isang babae. At ito ang normative. Pag sinabi normative, ito yung mismong disenyo doon sa creation. If you would uh, research on the creation ordinance, you'll find out that marriage is only, only man, which is between man and a woman. Okay. So, if we will also look on First Timothy, oh, uh, let's see, uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew first. Book of Matthew, let's see here. Chapter 19, verses 5 to 6. Sabi dito, and, sa- and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. At ang nagsasalita rito yung ating Panginoong Heso Kristo nung pinag-uusapan yung issue tungkol sa divorce. So makikita natin na sa original na design ng Diyos, uh, ang perfectong design niya on marriage is walang divorce. Sabi nga dito, di ba, sa verse uh, 6, uh, they are one, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. So, uh, in Genesis, saka sa Matthew, plain, uh, Matthew na binasa natin, chapter 19, plainly teaches that this has been the norm for marriage since creation. So the instances of polygamy uh, among the Old Testament saints like Abraham or Jacob or even si David, isama na natin si Solomon, and others were violations of God's law for marriage. 
kasi magtataka yung iba karin yung mga tanong marinig ko Tim no na bakit an bakit pinagbabawal ng Diyos ang mag-asawa ng marami eh bakit sila David lalo si Solomon ang dami ng pangasawa so due to the lesser light of the Old Testament dispensation such polygamy as Waldron uh, said did not manifest the same degree of hardness of heart as it would today and uh, also uh, makita natin na uh, nasa progress pa yung paggawa ng uh, Old and New Testament. So, hindi pa malinaw sa kanila mga maraming bagay noon patungkol sa mga uh, kalooban ng Diyos at kautosan ng Diyos tungkol sa marriage. Though may mga mandates naman sa kanila about marriage before, pero hindi pa, kumbaga, hindi pa nila nabigyan ng ganong kabigatan masyado, uh, wala pa masyadong weight Uh, dahil nga in progress pa ang scriptures nung sinusulat pa. And uh, the contracting of such polygamous marriages under gospel light would manifest a much more dangerous degree of hardness of heart. Also, dun sa confession sa binasa natin kanina, uh, sabi rin, no, marriage is to be between one man and one woman. So, It did not mention here of one man and another man. Yeah. So in that particular phrase, Randy, eh, nililinaw kagad kung ano yung mga proper subjects of mm-hmm. uh, marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, taliwas sa uh, paniwala or katuruan ng iba sa ating kapanahonan mm-hmm. na pwede ang lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. At uh, iba pang mga kombinasyon na mm-hmm. naiisip nila. Pero dito, nakikita natin na napakalino po between one man and one woman. Only. Only. Yes. So, uh, makita rin natin dito, no, sinabi, it's not, uh, it's Adam and Eve sa so original uh, crea- uh, design sa creation ng marriage. It has never been Adam and Steve mm-hmm. or Adana and Eve. Hindi ganon ang marriage. Kasi nga, pag ginawa mo yun, Randy, you're changing the subjects mm-hmm. of uh, what a proper marriage should be. Yes, yes. So, uh, pinapakita nga rito, yung sabi nga ni Brad Tim kanina, yung subjects sa marriage. Walang third party dito. Kung tutusin, ang third party dito is the primary party na nagkasal sa kanila ay ang Diyos. If we're talking about sexes, Mm-hmm. It is male and female, very clear from yes. what the confession is saying, which is, of course, called from what the Bible also says. Mm-hmm. Nabanggit mo kanina, Randy, yung Genesis 2.24. Mm-hmm. Napakalino doon. Man and woman din eh. Yes. At inulit-uli ng ating Panginoon doon sa Matthew naman. Mm-hmm. Chapter 19. At pinagdagan pa niya sa pagsabi na kung ano man yung pinagsama ng Panginoon, eh mm-hmm. yung paghiwalayin. Na- ng sino man. Ng sino man. Yes. At uh, yun nga, nung, uh, bakit uh, ganito, no? Sapagkat nakita ng Diyos, itin natin sa Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, nakita ng Diyos na hindi, uh, it's not good for a man to be alone. Kailangan niya ng helper. Kaya naman, ibinigay niya ang babae para sa lalaki, uh, para um, for marriage, no? So, yun yung pinag-uusapan dito sa may paragraph 2. Ah, Basahin ko uli yung paragraph 2. Sabi rito, marriage was ordained for the mutual help okay, of husband and wife. Mutual help. And uh, elaborate natin yung mutual help. Kasi sa panahon natin ngayon, ang pag-aasawa, lalo na sa uh, kultura natin mga Pinoy, no, ang nanonotice ko is pag nag-aasawa, dahil nga ang lalaki, ang uh, ikaw nga eh, Uh, ama ng tahanan o hari sa pamilya. Though, ang design naman, kung bibigitin natin sa Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33, sinasabi naman ng ng Panginoon na ang, ang uh, nag, nagdadala o ang ika nga yung headship sa tahanan na yung lalaki. Pero sa ating kapanahunan, uh, apart from scriptures na kanilang pagkakaunawa na nag-aasawa lang diretsyo na walang lubos sa pagkaunawa sa salita ng Diyos, eh, para bang ang lalaki, ang hari, at ang mga asawa ay sa bahay lamang. At natuluyan talaga yung sabi dito sa confession na sabi eh, uh, helper. Pero 
Ang sabi ito, mutual help. Eh, sa panahon natin, naging anong nangyari, uh, yung asawa, naging hindi mutual help, naging helper. O naging katulong sa bahay. So, parang naging alila. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin. Sabi ito, mutual. So, dalawa sa is mutual help. And, uh, you would also notice, na sabi roon, uh, ang purpose is for the increase of mankind. Diba? Yun nga yung uh, utos ng ating Panginoon, kaya dan to, tsaka kay Eva, to populate the earth. So, there are three major purposes of marriage mentioned in paragraph 2 uh, that indicates having children. Uh, ito is one of the purposes of marriage, to have children. It is not the only purpose of marriage. Bakit nabanggit ko ito? Sapagkat sa mga sa Roman Catholics, they have this view of uh, they view procreation as the only purpose of marriage. So parang palahian lamang. Yun ang uh, view nila ng marriage. So this is a false this is false as the scripture references cited under paragraph 2 natin binasa kanina. Uh, Sex must not be viewed as a necessary evil also, given only for the purpose of procreation. So, hindi lamang uh, yung uh, for the purpose of having children. Uh, ang sex naman ay, kasi medyo uh, tayo mga Pilipino ay medyo conservative. Pag naririnig yung tatlong letters na yun, S-E-X, parang na, medyo mahiyain tayo eh. Oh, ano ba yan? Parang may halong... Uh, kabastusan yung pinag-uusapan. Actually, naging bastos lamang ito sapagkat dahil sa kasalanan na nasa puso ng tao o nasa isipan ng tao. At saka, uh, inilabas yung konteksto ng sex hmm. uh, uh, beyond the bounds of marriage. Mm-hmm. Kaya siya naging ganun. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, we will see here that uh, Sex must not be viewed as a necessary evil given only for the purpose of procreation. However, procreation is one of the purposes of marriage. So, to abstract uh, the, the uh, abstract sex and marriage from procreations, procreation sometimes reflects an unbiblical view of marriage and children. And, uh, the Bible views children as a blessing. Sabi dun sa Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 that to populate the earth. So meaning, ang mga bata oh, ay blessing mula sa Panginoon. And uh, the attitude which views them as a curse is rooted in the terrible selfishness of our modern society. Eh, katulad nga yung kanina na pag-usapan natin sa uh, yung Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 in which ang command is uh, children, obey ch- your parents. Uh, children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. But um, sometimes children are having a hard time understanding um, who to obey or who is in authority because in our time today the design of marriage or the norm nga ng marriage eh nabago na meron ng uh, parents na dalawa parehas lalaki. Minsan, dalawa parehas babae. May iba naman eh, walang tatay, walang nanay, isa lang. Kasi single lang yung parent dahil yun ang uso raw ngayon. So, uh, nagiging, nakukonfuse ang mga bata, papano niya isasight yung katotohanan ng Biblia sa reality ng nakikita niyang disenyo ng marriage sa panahon natin ngayon na nakikita natin di lamang sa mga modernong tahanan, kundi doon din sa social media. Imagine, may mga artista no, na bigla lang nabuntis. Hindi alam kung sino ang tatay, nanganak. Then, after manganak, may libro na. Uh, ano na, parang uh, family advisor na, or uh, how do you call that? Naging marriage counselor? Yes, marriage ganun. counselor. Mga marriage guru na. Na samantalang, hindi nga ikinasal. Nanganak lang. So, uh, ito yung mga nagpapagulo doon sa ikang disenyo ng marriage. 
na in which hindi ito ang norm o disenyo ng ating Diyos. As I have said, uh, yung iba, because there is an idea of too much love o yung loving oneself, yung self-love, Brad, yung mga idea na self-esteem, uh, self-esteem o self-love, believe in yourself, hindi po yun ang katuruan ng Biblia. So ngayon, there, there is no person in this world that could love you uh, uh, more than uh, you do. So, you have to love yourself. Ikaw lang yun. Kaya ngayon, naging single na lang. Ito, sinisira din ang design ng marriage. Kaya naman, lumalabo ang meaning ng marriage. Sabi ng confession, it plainly reflects the down-to-earth view of marriage taught in the Bible when it states that marriage was ordained for preventing uncleanness. Makikita natin yan sa 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's read that portion of Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Browse tayo, browse tayo sa no, old school. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 2 to 5. Ang sabi dito, But because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife. Yun po, ang sabi, uncleanness. And each woman is to have her own husband. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, also the husband must, does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Then on... Uh, Verse 9, Sabirito, But if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So, uh, may tinatawag sa Biblia, uh, team na yunok. Yung mga yunok, uh, ito yung mga lalaki to Brad. Wala naman sinabing yunok na babae. Meron ba? Na yunok. Parang wala ata. So, Itong yunok ngayon, eh, siya yung buhay niya at panahon niya ay in-offer sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. So kung ganun, you have that gift of celibacy, na katulad ni Apostle Paul, uh, na may gift of celibacy, um, though that portion is, sabi ng iba is debatable, but I do believe, uh, na sinasabi ng scripture, na si Paul ay uh, single, no? At Sinasabi nga nila dito na magsisingle na lang ako. Hindi na lang ako mag-aasawa. At least kung hindi ka magmamahal, hindi ka masasaktan. O, diba? Yun yung mga narunig natin. Parang teleserye lang yung dating, Brad. So, mahalin mo ang iyong sarili ng higit sa kahit ano pa mang bagay. So, with that said, yung iba, kumuha ng anak at buo na ang kanilang pamilya. Siya bilang single parent at merong anak. Hindi po ito normal at hindi rin po ito ang uh, idea ng pamilya na sinasabi ng Biblia. Sapagkat ang Biblia, when it comes to family, it is in the context of marriage. So, yun po siya. Ito yung divinely ordained solution to the struggles with sexual lust, which is common to single men at hindi lang mga men, kundi women. So, uh, baka may maidagdag ka ron, Tim, sa nasabi ko. Yun na nga. Uh, sinasabi ng Bible, or si Paul in particular, if you had that, that gift of, uh, ano bang tawag nun? Silibasi. Sing, single blessedness. Uh, hindi singleness, ha? Blessed singleness. Uh, blessed singleness. Eh, by all means, do it. But if you're going to do it, just to say, sabi mo nga kanina, para hindi na lang uh, uh, magkasala ko, no? Hmm. Eh, mukhang hindi mangyayari yun. Dahil yun ang kabaliktaran, actually. Dahil hindi ka nga nagkakasala physically, 
Mm. Ang isip mo naman eh puno ng kalaswaan. Yes. Regarding all these mm. things. And so what what use is your singleness nung mm. kung ganoon ang nangyayari? Mm-hmm. But again, if uh, the apostle Paul is right in saying that uh, you have this gift that uh, you have to remain silent, ang kapalit naman ron Randy na kung wala kang partner sa buhay eh devoted ang buhay mm. mo sa paglingkod sa sa Diyos. Mm. So if you don't if that the gift of celibacy is not found in you, kumbaga parang feeling mo lang ay eh, may gift ka sa celibacy pero alam ng iyong mga magulang ng iyong pamilya at mga kamag-anak na mukhang wala kang gift noon, mm. eh malamang tama sila. Kaysa masunog ka sa uh, anong, anong passion passion kanina, payo ni Apostle Paul, eh, mag-asawa ka na lang. Yes, mag-asawa na lang. So, uh, yun po, no? uh, pinapakita dito yung purpose ng marriage, pinapakita rin kung sino yung subjects ng marriage. Mm-hmm. At uh, mahalaga po ang marriage. Sa, hindi lamang para nagsama lang. Kasi ngayon, sa panahon natin, eh, nag-comment lang doon sa isang post kung ano yung photo op nila. Pagdating sa baba, eh, may nag-like, nag-heart-heart na, Brad. Nagkita na sunod na araw at sabi, eh, mag-aasawa na sila. Mag-aasawa, pag tinanong mo, after a few weeks, nakita mo sila magkasama na, ang sabihin eh, ano na ba kayo? Mag-aasawa na kami. Kailan kayo kinasal? Hindi pa kami kinakasal. Pero mag-asawa na. They're, benef- they're receiving the benefits of marriage, but they don't want a responsibility and they don't want to tie the knot sa marriage. So, yun yung kinaklaro na itong uh, ating uh, paragraphs 1 and 2. At uh, yun lamang po yun. And uh, we'll move to paragraphs 3 and 4.